Hello and welcome to Art with Tracy Ann. Today I'll be tackling the subject of composition. In the Zentangle community, I often see people asking how they can make their Zentangle inspired art better with their composition. So I have some handy tips and techniques for you, so stick around. When we create a piece of art, the way we put it all together is the composition. If it looks good, it is good. But what if things don't look just right? Here's a list of some of the principles and elements of design, and I'm sure you're familiar with many of them. Is it possible to create a good piece of art without knowing these principles and elements? Absolutely. but it could take a lot of trial and error. Without getting too bogged down with the theory, let's put these into practice. If we compare composition to creating a meal, a meal is made up of lots of dishes. And of course, for these dishes, we need a recipe. That's where the principles come in. If the principles of design are our way to create a good recipe, then we need some tools or ingredients, which are the elements to make that design work. If our composition involves only one tangle, in this case printomps, there's not very many ingredients. It's like serving somebody a plain bowl of spaghetti, not very appetizing. This tile still only uses the one tangle, but it's much more appealing. By adding a few ingredients, we've achieved a far better result. So which principles and elements of design did I use here? I wanted a focus to the piece, so to create emphasis, I used value so that the lighter shapes stand out from the darker ones. I wanted my tile to look balanced, so when you're considering balance, it can be the same on both sides, so that's symmetrical and can be a bit boring, or asymmetrical where both sides look different, but they carry the same weight. By using the elements of line and shape and distributing them evenly but randomly over the tile, I was able to achieve asymmetrical balance. Unity or a sense of connectiveness has been achieved also by the use of line and shape. Contrast in a piece creates drama. It's what you usually hear people say makes a piece pop and we've done this by using value, the dark against the light. To create interest in your work you'll need to add some variety. I varied the size of the shapes and the value from light to dark. Here's another example using toodles. This tile also has asymmetrical balance and this was created by a balance of the size and shape of the pattern. To make my tile look more interesting I've added a variety of sizes and values from light to dark. I've created harmony by using the same shape throughout the tile. The contrast is in the size of the shapes and also in the value of the white against the black. Movement is the way our eyes travel across the tile. I've used lines, the little squiggly lines and the shape to imply this movement by having them radiate out from the centre. Facebook challenges are a great way to practice your tangling. I'm going to share with you one that I took part in to demonstrate how I composed the piece. This is one of the groups that I follow and the challenge was 15 Minute Magic led by Liz Drake. Each day Liz gave us a different tangle and we had exactly 15 minutes to draw that tangle. 
On weekends we had unlimited time to finish patterns and add some colour. Day one was to create a background. I used watercolours with the wet on wet technique and added some salt to create this fluffy texture. So already we've got the first element. So let's now look at what principles and elements I used. The main focus of this piece is Anthem down in the bottom corner. Another focus is up in the top left hand side. Once our eyes have left those focused areas we want to let them move across the page and I've done that using line and shape. Organic lines radiate out from the anthem and then lead us up to the shapes of those jewels which frame the page. As I worked on this opus tall, you may have noticed that it was all weighted in that bottom right hand corner, so I had to balance that in the opposite corner. I increased the size of my shapes in that corner and that still wasn't enough so I intensified the colour. I then widened that border. To create harmony I used harmonious colours that were subtle in tone. There is no great contrast of values either. To create contrast I used contrasting shapes the texture on the anthem which is flat and angular against the organic nature of the patterns around it. And space, that empty space in the centre contrasts with the busy patterned exterior. The advantage of having some empty space or negative space is that the eye gets chance to have a rest. Unity is how the elements work together. I use soft pastel colours then a patterned border to tie the whole piece together. And finally there's lots of variety in shape, size, colour, line, texture, pattern and space. So how do you know if you've made a successful composition? First of all does it look good? If not Ask yourself, is the overall composition unified? What can I do to tie things together? Is there enough variety? Are there some areas of contrast? Is there a focus point or an area of emphasis? And from that focus point, does the viewer's eye travel over the design? Is the overall composition balanced? You decide which of the principles and elements you want to use. You don't need to tick all the boxes. This isn't a set of rules, it's just a way of helping us create something that's aesthetically pleasing and optimises the user's experience. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe. I post videos every Wednesday and if you subscribe you don't miss out. So join me next week and until then, have a great week. Bye for now. If you'd like to see more of my videos, click on the links on the screen and don't forget, hit the subscribe button.